Hi everyone, Stepan here. I'm going to start patching up the E4 opening series by going through some lines in the Karakhan I haven't covered originally. And we are starting with the hillbilly attack. A completely unsound idea that I'm going to show you how to refute with black. But after I've done that, I'm also going to show you how to play with white if black misplays the opening and if black doesn't know what to do. So the hillbilly starts after E4. We have the Karo Khan, c6, and white plays bishop c4. Now, bishop c4 is an extremely weird move. So why is it weird? Black wants to play d5 anyway, and it's going to come with tempo on the bishop. So white's main idea is to sacrifice the e4 pawn after d5 and go for a wild, crazy attack, which doesn't work. Okay, so that's the first thing. However, white can also play this position slightly differently and actually the way they can play which i'm going to show you could cause some issues to black so i'm going to show you two most dangerous ideas for white so the first idea after d5 is to simply go bishop b3 and this tempts black to take the pawn on e4 and we are going to take and this is the essence of the opening so take the pawn white continues queen h5 threatening mate and we defend from here. So that's the first idea. It's completely unsound. The engine gives black minus one, so white has zero compensation for the pawn. You could, of course, go wrong and play something weird like knight of six and get mated. You can also play a bad move like e6 and block in your bishop. But if you play this correctly, you should be fine. You should have a clean extra pawn. We are going to look at this mainline gambit as the the main line but the second way to play this which i think is actually slightly more annoying is to take take and then go bishop b5 i should say that most people who've played this against me online have played this with taking on d5 and then bishop b3 this is just bad this makes zero sense. Black is slightly better because white's bishop is bad. Black has very easy development. We can just go bishop f5. And whatever happens from here, we have two good bishops. We will have two good knights. Uh, it's, it's just easy development. Okay, so no extra material, but it's a standard Carlsbad structure. However, usually in the Carlsbad, in the exchange Karo Khan, this bishop is on d3 which is where it wants to be because there's pressure on h7. Uh, white can try to trade off dark squared bishop, light squared bishops to weaken black's king and so on and so on. So not taking and allowing d4 is much more aggressive. But if they do take and they go bishop to b5, this is again slightly better for black. But if white knows exactly what they're doing, this could be annoying. Let me show you. So knight c6. We block the check, of course. And now white's idea is knight f3, knight e5. And knight e5 doesn't really win a pawn or a rook and the pawn or an exchange and the pawn, but it aims to uh, put the knight on e5 so that our bishop can be embarrassed later on. So we will react with bishop g4. That's the best move, preventing knight e5. However, white can now expand on the king side, force our bishop to g6, which is its best square and then play knight e5 threatening both to take on e6 and to advance with h4 h5 trapping the bishop and this is a very common theme in the Karo Khan you can see this in the two knights with bishop h5 you can see this in in many Karo Khan and Slav slash semi-Slav and London types of positions where this bishop is outside of the pawn chain and black plays e6 so h3 Bishop h5, g4, bishop g6, knight e5. Okay, we have to defend the knight. Queen c7, but now the real issue comes. So, okay, white first has to defend the knight. Uh, white will defend the knight with d4. If white plays f4, this really isn't good. We can play e6 and the pawn cannot advance. We also have the e4 square for the bishop. So white is going to go d4. We play e6. And now h4 comes so now if we don't do anything h5 and our bishop is trapped so we are going to play this tactically and once again i believe this is the best way for white to play the hillbilly attack not to go into those mainline gambit uh 
variations, which I'm going to show you how to easily refute. But do it like this. Now we could play f6 straight away. And that's a common idea from the two knights. But we are going to go bishop e4 first. And after f3, we are now going to go f6. And we've created multiple weaknesses. The queen has access to, to g3 and obviously the knight's going to move. So knight takes c6 is the only way to play. bc6 and if, uh, if uh, white... Uh, moves the bishop away, then queen g3 and bishop takes f3 is completely winning. So white has to take on e4. We can throw in queen g3 or take, but let's say we throw in queen g3, king f1 takes. And this should be a slight, slight advantage to to, to black. Uh, it's, it's a messy position. Both sides can obviously win, but yeah. Again, this is the most annoying way for white to play, in my opinion. And I've been playing the Karakan for eight years now, and I've faced the hillbilly hundreds of times. This is the only thing I find challenging. Now let's get into the mainline gambit. So after e4, c6, bishop c4, d5, if they play bishop b3 straight away, we are just going to take the pawn. So d e4. And what's white's idea? White's idea, as we said previously, is checkmate on f7. Now, you don't want to play e6. e6 is a passive move. Even though it prevents mate, it blocks in your bishop. And you're going to have a standard Karokan position, similar to what you get in the Karpov variation, where you have to deal with this bishop. And white's going to win back the pawn on e4 and then play d4, c4. It's going to be a standard position. You're going to lose your, your opening advantage. So instead of that, we play g6, the only alternative. The queen is attacked. Now, everybody plays queen h4. Magnus Carlsen has played queen h4. Alireza has played queen h4. This is the move people play because it's the most annoying move. It puts pressure on the pawn on e4. I should mention that the engine recommendation is queen e2. And this should give white some compensation for the pawn. After bishop g7, uh, which is not the best move according to the engine, the engine plays a5 immediately. Uh, and the idea is to not only to chase the bishop to a suboptimal square or trap it, but to play knight a6, knight c5, once the queen comes to c4 to trade off the bishop, or play knight c5 to just win the bishop pair immediately so you could start with a5 but let's say we play the human bishop g7 uh, white has the option to take this pawn straight away but that would lose a tempo for a pawn and we would have a big lead in development so that's one way to do it or after bishop g7 knight c3 to not lose a tempo knight f6 takes takes queen takes now a5 a4, you have to save your bishop, knight a6. Uh, and if knight f3, we have knight c5, winning the bishop pair. If not knight f3, then something else. But we should have slightly more active pieces. This is the engine line. But no one has ever played it. No one has ever played queen e2. I'm just mentioning it. One thing people play which is bad is queen e5. And this is just a trick. You want to win the rook, but... You're not going to win the rook. We play knight f6. We've defended the pawn. And this should be much better for black. Close to winning. After knight c3, knight bd7 is a tempo on the queen. So there's no time for, for knight takes pawn. Uh, queen d4, queen b6. Again, no time to take the pawn. Queen c4, another tempo. Queen e2. And now finally we defend the pawn. And we are gonna we are gonna be up a pawn i don't know what the best move here is i think either f4 or f3 should be best so basically we keep the pawn this is like minus two and and black is winning everybody plays queen h4 okay so this is what you're going to be facing and most people play knight f6 here which is a fine move but i'm going to show you an idea that refutes the hillbilly completely it's just the opening makes no sense after this. And once again, no one has played this move. Bishop f5. So the idea is not only to defend the pawn. That's sort of... Uh, well, that's not as important as the main idea. The main idea is to play e6. We've brought our bishop outside of the pawn chain. We are going to go e6 and trade queens because white queen has no good squares. 
okay uh, the best way for white to respond i believe is the immediate f3 and that gives the queen the f2 square so after e6 the queen can retreat but if they don't go f3 then the queens are going to be traded off so if for example knight c3 double attacking the pawn we don't play knight f6 defending we play e6 and now what do you do you trade queens you have to trade queens and after for example queen takes king takes uh, h3 trying to win the bishop h5 this bishop is always safe it's always safe you always have h5 it's just it's just a clean pawn up and uh, eventually white is going to play f3 if they go knight e2 trying to play knight g3 and win the pawn we can insert a5 so no no time for for anything reasonable if knight g3 we just go knight f6 and defend uh, now again d3 or f3 are going to have to be played so that's what happens if they don't go f3 if they go knight c3 if they go f3 preventing a queen trade we take knight takes e6 threatening to trade queens and queen f2 okay white obviously wants to keep pieces on the board because this is all about initiative but now we go queen c7 and it's really not easy for white to play h3 g4 firstly because we can play h5 preventing that secondly once we play bishop d6 this is going to be very annoying and we're going to be threatening to to win material so for example knight c3 knight d7 h3 trying to play g4 just bishop d6 they have to castle so that they don't lose the queen and now we go h5 and this bishop once again is always safe we can choose to castle king side or queen side our knight i think is optimally placed on e7 so that it isn't hanging in any lines but knight of six is also fine and just no problems at all so this is what we are going to be doing against this queen h5 queen h4 idea we just go bishop f5 followed by e6 trading queens and we're up a clean pawn black has a big advantage white has no initiative and we should be able to convert with precise play okay now let's test this by playing it out against ai we're going to be playing the hillbilly against nocti a human-like ai uh, against which you can play any position so previously you've seen me add some endgame themes uh into Nocti and play them out so it's great for playing out 10 games and recently they've added a feature in which you can actually import your repertoires your opening repertoires and play the games in those openings against Nocti so what we are going to do we're going to create a hillbilly repertoire so just paste the pgn you can get the pgn for for this video uh in on my patreon feed uh you, you can see the link in the description uh, if you don't want to create your own so let's call this hillbilly okay i'm going to link this repertoire in the description as well so you can actually get this exact thing if you press on the link below uh, save repertoire and now let's play a game against nocti i'm gonna be black uh my current difficulty is bishop four so let's yeah let's do it a bit harder so let's do rook two and let's play okay c6 d5 oh it takes <clears throat> oh it's playing bishop b5 yeah that's that's the best line so knight c6 bishop g4 bishop e2 yeah i'm not convinced bishop e2 is is pretty bad bishop e2 is definitely pretty bad so i can go e6 immediately or knight f6 so i'm gonna go e6 yeah bishop e2 is just an awful move just just doesn't do anything bishop d6 has to be good i haven't even covered this in the video because it makes no sense wait knight f6 is bad it says okay move okay the thing with nocti is you get immediate feedback so that's great after the game you can review your stuff and it's going to give you an evaluation and if you're using nocti for the first time you can actually get rating assessment so it, once you play your first game against it okay knight d2 i'm tempted to castle but i also like queen c7 so yeah let, let's castle 
This is now a normal Carlsbad structure, so I'm gonna start a minority attack. Wait, dubious move? Are you kidding me? How can a minority attack be dubious? No, no I, I don't believe this. I'm just... Mistake? Why is this a mistake? Wait a minute. Why? 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 So b5... Uh, b4, c4 takes. Bishop takes. Takes, knight takes. Okay. Uh, so let's go queen c7 first. Great move. Okay. Yeah, I'm not giving up my bishop. <laughs> it wants to trade everything. Okay. Doesn't that lose a pawn? So bishop e2. Okay, it doesn't. Bishop e2, queen e2, knight takes, pawn takes. Doesn't work. So should I just go bishop g6? Um, bishop e2, queen e2. Yeah, maybe there's bishop g5 there. <clears throat> yeah, I'm, I'm playing bishop g6. I don't want to trade. It's a mistake. Come on. I'm, I was playing against bishop g5 so that when takes, I can play gf and king g7. Okay, now I'm definitely playing b4. So b4, c4 doesn't work anymore. Is there knight g3? No. Yeah, I'm playing b4 now it's excellent why didn't it like a6 b5 it's a normal plan okay so we're done with the game so this is what you can do i didn't want to show you the whole game because that would have taken half an hour uh, so you can import any variation any repertoire into nocti and play it out against the ai as you saw nocti made things very very interesting and actually got a relatively equal position out of a bad opening so as you saw the stuff that I've imported didn't include what Nocti had played. So it, if it has its own ideas, it's going to deviate. So that's great. Usually when we create repertoires, we're stuck practicing the same thing over and over again. But Nocti is creative and it actually found an interesting way to play. So if you would like to check Nocti out, uh, there's a link in the in the description. You can also use the discount code hanging pawns to get a 64% discount. A 64% discount uh, for two months, so it's going to be very cheap, a couple of dollars. And yeah, let, let me know what you think. I think it's a great tool and I've been, I'm going to be honest, using it mostly to play out end games because I normally don't have anybody to play against. People find it boring to play rook end games against me and, and, and that's okay. But yeah, this is a new feature, so I'm going to try out playing it in, in my repertoire as well. Uh, let's go back to the video. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how white can uh, get an advantage if black misplays this position. So c6, bishop c4. Everything you're about to see uh, played by black here should not be played by black. I, I play this from the black perspective. I would never play it for white. So please don't play this way as black. White is going to be very happy. So d5, bishop b3. We said we take the pawn. If, if, if uh, you want a bad French, you can play e6. And now after e6, just d4. Eventually, you're going to have to play knight f6 and e5 is going to happen and now you have a french defense where white actually has a pleasant advantage white is going to go c3 white is going to go knight e2 defending d4 so c3 let's say c5 knight e2 this is just the tarash french normal tarash french with the bad bishop on c8 the other knight is coming to f3 everything is reinforcing the d4 square black should of course never close down the center because a mad attack is coming this knight can come out to f4 the queen can come out to g4 the knight can then come out to h5 so let me just give you an example so bishop e7 uh castles castles knight f4 knight c6 queen g4 and good luck defending this I don't even know what to suggest. I mean, you can you can lose straight away with like bishop g5, knight h5. If h6, then h4. Um, so yeah, 
don't 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 go for this another line that you should be avoiding is knight of six straight away uh, where once again e5 happens and after this the knight really should go to g8 if the knight goes to d7 then again d4 uh, and and you have a bad french defense so as white don't hesitate to play e5 as soon as knight f6 is played so in my opinion playing with e6 and knight f6 just leads to a very very bad french defense now let me show you what happens if you play correctly to start with so you get this position but then you play e6 this isn't losing for black or anything but it's just very hard to play and after knight c3 knight f6 for example queen h4 double attacking the pawn you're gonna have to give up the pawn you don't have to you, you, you're gonna have to give up the pawn as black white doesn't have to take it white can play f3 which i think is even more promising and this is going to resemble i don't even know what opening but just a bad Karo Khan where white has a huge initiative so for example f3 takes knight takes bishop e7 uh, I don't know, d4, uh, b5, trying to chase your knight away. You can play bishop g5, you can castle, and the engine prefers black because black is very solid and has an extra pawn, but it's actually very hard to play. You're going to have to play bishop b7 and c5 to activate the bishop, and you're playing a normal position, a pawn up, where you can play an easy position, a pawn up. So once again, as black, this is what you do i'm going to flip the board back so after bishop c4 you play d5 if they take and play bishop b5 remember to play knight c6 on knight f3 bishop g4 when the bishop gets chased away you put it on g6 once the knight comes to e5 you play queen c7 and when h4 happens you play bishop e4 followed by f6 going into that tactical line if uh, they retreat the bishop straight away, you take on queen h5, you play g6, not e6, and on queen h4, you play bishop f5. And then e6, trading queens, and you're up a pawn in a queenless position with no issues at all. Okay, uh, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, visit Nocti if you would like to import your repertoires over there and play them out against the AI. Uh, I think it's a great tool. Uh, and see you later. Bye-bye.